Hi everybody, Mark Burdick coming to you from Music Stadium at Connemaw Valley High School with Homer Center head coach Greg Page who gets ready for his 17th season at Homer Center. Our Homer Center preview brought to you by Wallback Insurance in Homer City. More choices, more savings at Wallback Insurance. You can get an instant quote at wallbeckinsurance.com. That's wallbeckinsurance.com. Also, Burdick Landscaping from Landscaping Projects, Mowing, Fall leaf pickup right around the corner, and I hate to think this way, but also around the corner, maybe winter snow removal. Burdig Landscaping has you covered. Check them on. Uh, check them out online at BurdigLandscaping.com. That's B-E-R-T-I-G Landscaping.com. And no, that's not my company, but my nephew Evan does a fine job. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Coach Page, I mentioned Connemaw Valley takes me back. Uh, and it's hard for me to remember back, but I think it's been that long when I was a kid uh, and came over here on Saturday afternoons, and here we are at Usyk Stadium, and for the first time ever, uh, they're going to play night football as they yeah. join the season. You won't come here because you'll host both of the uh, Connemaws Township and Valley at Memorial Field in Homer City, but your thoughts on the conference's expansion? Well, it shows my age, too, because I played. we played Connemaw Valley when I played it. Laurel Valley so my junior year we came here and it was a hot day like today and I don't think the outcome went our way that day so uh, uh, tough place to play I, I feel good about those two teams coming in I think it brings more stability to the conference um, you know 12 teams now it shows that there's interest for people wanting to join the heritage and it's not just a football thing obviously with everything else with the other sports and the the activities and such but um, you know it gives us stability in the future if we do end up having another co-op or two we still have a nice number of teams in our conference it sure feels like as we conduct this interview one of those saturday afternoons at usic stadium because it is really hot down here on the field greg you're going to lose a lot of starters from last year's team you return only four on both sides of the ball let's start with the positive because you do have a lot of nice skilled people back we do. We have a couple skilled guys. Uh, you know, it's it's one of those things we have to replace in a lot of different areas. Um, and sometimes that's the nature of high school football. Having said that, I can't remember a time in recent memory where we've lost this many kids and then had so few seniors replacing them. For instance, in 17, we lost, I think, 13 or 14 seniors. And then in 18, we still had 14 or 15. So you had a little bit of a, the, the bridge gap there. But um, you know, it's it's just one of those things. We're going to roll forward with it. Um, our kids are working real hard, and to me, that's the most important thing. Last year, first time in a long time that you finished under 500 after the playoff loss at five and six. You had a lot of injuries at the quarterback position, like I've never seen really anywhere. Uh, and Landon Hill kind of limped his way through the at least the second half of the season, and really, I thought, gutted it out uh, because he clearly wasn't healthy. He had some off-season surgery. You got Angelo Alexander back and hope to keep him upright because he has a lot of tools at the quarterback position. He does. You know, the the couple games we were able to, to see him in action, he he pleasantly surprised us. Uh, he's, we knew he was intelligent, but his grasp of the offense and, and being able to handle things and see things is something that we're very impressed with. And uh, he's gotten a little stronger, so he's able to throw the ball uh, a little bit better too. So we're hoping with a, a, a complete dimension there. And, you know, Landon really did gut it out last year. It, it's not easy to play the running back position when you're, when you're, you're banged up and gimpy because you're going to get hit every time you have the ball. Um, so hopefully he's healthy this year. You know, it's, it's good to have kids like that to kind of build around. But, you know, we got a lot of work to do in other positions. Well, one of the key positions and, you know, games are usually won and lost in the trenches. And that has to be a concern because, as you said, you return no starters on the offensive or defensive line. So how have you gone about trying to rebuild it and find some of those pieces for that puzzle? Well, we got some willing kids. Um, we're going to be new there in a lot of positions, but we got some kids that have worked hard in the weight room. Uh, they're very coachable. We have a couple. Um, we have a couple um, tricks up our sleeve with a couple guys from a, a previous era that, that you're familiar with, Gene Raymond and Donnie Mester, that work with those guys, and you know they just take those guys to a different level with their work ethic and their attention to detail. And we had a T.J. Taglietti as a as a volunteer line coach there too. So. I, I really believe, and it's going to be a day-by-day, week-by-week thing with that group, that we have to be patient. Um, they will learn. They will grow and hopefully get better. they got good guys leading them there. And I know our skill guys will support them and, 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 and be positive with them and kind of bring them along at the right pace. 
you know, with the skill position on offense, obviously Landon and Angelo were the first two names that come to mind. But there were times younger players really impressed me last year when they were given opportunities. I'm thinking of uh, young kids like Junior uh, Braden Dunn, uh, the Jones uh, boys, and, and some others that uh, I think you have high hopes for, don't you? We do. We do. You mentioned a couple names there. Those guys, I think, you know, Braden had some breakout plays last year, and Will Jones came on late um, to help us on both sides of the ball with – with some injuries and some shifts with personnel. And, and there's other guys. Jackson Rohn's a senior of ours who's really come along with his hands offensively. He started at safety last year. Caleb Palmer is a tight end receiver type kid who's just just a, a good leader, a good solid kid, um, you know, that you want in that area. And we're looking for guys like um, Isaiah McCracken to, to maybe step up and, and give Landon some help at the running back position. He's um, He's built very, very well for that position and, People like uh, Brian Mills and Dan Jones, Ocean Maritita. Um, you know, the, I hope I'm not missing anybody in the, the, the older guys, but those are those are some guys that we're, you know, we're looking for in the, the older groups to, um, you know, kind of give us that spark and that surge we need. Kevin Marabito waiting uh, behind the scenes there. You mentioned I hope I'm not missing anybody, and that immediately made me think of your late father because he's probably looking down on you saying, why don't you have your roster so you can mention each and everybody <laughs> on the list, including the water boy? You know, what he's probably looking down and saying is, what the hell kind of offense are you running now? Because <laughs> he does, the, la the later years when my mom would bring him to games, I don't think he could see far enough out on the field to realize that we weren't running the power eye anymore. And I never had the heart to tell him, and I if I did, if we had conversations about it, you know how diplomatic he was. And, and Kevin knows all those. <laughs> yeah, the draw. We never put the draw in either. But yeah, you know, it's you never want to. That's the problem about these things and singling out kids because we have a lot of kids and we have younger kids working hard. We're going to have some younger kids, a couple freshmen and maybe a few more sophomores that really can can push for some time. But we, we just don't know yet. They have to get out there. They have to get in the environment. They have to get hit. You know, that we have to see if they'll hit and how they react. And, you know, the difference between camp and summer is that it's an everyday thing once you get into camp and you have your body and mind have to be willing to, to deal with that. Whereas in summer, you know, you go a couple of days in a row, then you have a day or two off for the weekend and that sort of thing. And so we'll see. I mean, it's um, what, what what's really nice about this group is it's a young group, but I, I believe they're they're hungry and they have good chemistry. I know one of your concerns was uh, as we were getting ready to release our football preview magazine for the first time next uh, week, as a matter of fact, but one of the things you listed for concerns was depth uh, experience and also depth. What about your overall numbers and how things are shaping up? Yeah, you know, to that point, I think everybody in our conference here today probably has those same concerns, uh, but I, we hope to be around 35 guys. Um, you know, there's, um, the, like I said, the small senior group. And then the other three classes are either in double digits or at nine apiece, which is, those are okay. I, I can live with those. And, again, I don't want to dip too far below those numbers because then when the other residual things happen during a season, you know, the knick-knack injuries or, heaven forbid, grades or anything like that, you don't want to dip too far down below 30. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a catch-22. You want to see your kids be physical, but you also want to protect them as much as you can and, keep them ready for game nights coach two final things your thoughts on the conference as a whole I, it sounds like coach speak a lot of guys say it every year but I really believe it's going to be a tough conference we were joking with Kevin um, you know he does have a nice group back and, and um, I would consider them to be one of the better teams but you know you look around and some of these teams that we've butted heads with every year it doesn't change I mean they're good you know like at Cambria Heights at PL Northern I mean West Shemokin has the big bull over there <laughs> Uh, and it's just you got you got Billy uh, with with the way they do things and Portage. I mean, it's just and the new guys coming in. It's just a lot. I, I respect everybody, and uh, I think it's going to be very competitive. You know, uh, with this new setup, scrimmage Northern Cambria. I guess uh, you know a lot of expectations for them. So you'll kind of find out where you are in a scrimmage. Although I don't like it from the standpoint, I think it kind of creates an imbalance with the standings as the season goes on. But that's a topic for another day. But you're going to get a good test with your scrimmage. We absolutely will. I mean, they're coming off a great season uh, where they won the district, and they put it all together uh, the second half of the year. I, a lot of respect for them and what Sam's done. and uh, So it'll be a formidable scrimmage, which is what you want to see. But I do tend to agree with you on the part that there's teams that aren't going to be facing each other in the regular season. I don't know any other way to do it, though, with the 12-team format. I think they probably figured out the best they could, but 
uh, kind of like the old Laurel Highlands when they had those situations with the number of teams. But, you know, you play it out and see how it goes. Topic for another day. I'd split them two divisions and then go find some non-conference games, but I'm not the athletic directors that have to find those games. Coach, thanks for doing this. Your 17th season we will have all of your games on WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM and Renda Digital TV will be video streaming all of your games. Once again, we get tremendous response. Believe it or not, your opener at Marion Center, I'm going to miss it. Travis Williams will be subbing for me, and maybe after Travis gets done, they won't want me back. So I I'm probably gonna, will see. I'm not going to comment on that. We'll have to see how the ratings shake out on that one. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you have a good trip, what, to the Midwest? Is yeah. that where? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, we'll, we'll try to do what we can there for you. We do appreciate all the coverage and the games. I know it's a big thing in our community. We call it Wildcat Nation now, but it's just a tremendous place for these kids to play and for people like me to coach. It's the, the support and – the aura about it or something that kind of gets in your blood. All right. Thanks, Coach. Coach's report brought to you by Walbeck Insurance in Homer City and Burdig Landscaping. And uh, we thank the coach. We'll look forward to covering Wildcat football once again. Don't forget our football preview magazine coming out the week of August the 7th. With head coach Greg Page, I'm Mark Burdig on Renda Digital TV.